Hello, I'm Zombie and I want to show you how easy it is to make a map for Wolfenstein 3D. All you need are three things. You need a copy of Wolfenstein 3D. You need an editor of your choice. In our video, we're going to be using WDC, which is created by Adam Beiser. And you need a general will to create something, like do something creative. Those are the three things you need. Um, your screen may look slightly different to this. I hope you're using WDC, but map editors like Havix will do the same thing. So let's go up to File, New Project, and we will want to give our game a project. So let's call it uh, Example, but not Game, because that's for something else I'm making. And you'll get the Project Information window. This is where we want to point a couple of folders. So first up, we want to navigate to where I've set up my project files in YouTube. Now I've got two folders here. I have Wolf 3D, which is my a copy of my core original Wolfenstein files. And then I have an output folder. So for the base data folder, we want to point that to our core files. There we go. It will auto detect the type of game it is. Cause if you use Spear of Destiny, it will detect that, et cetera, et cetera. And it will auto fill our map uh, item names. Apart from that, we need to point the output folder. Of course, we point it to output. Okay. You can call these folders whatever you want, as long as you point them appropriately. So this must always contain your core Wolfenstein files. And this will always be where your edited files will end up. Now, with that done, we hit OK. Those extra things are for more advanced modding. You don't have to worry about them. And this is what we see. Your screen should look very similar to this, if not exactly the same, but I won't judge. And let's begin. So we've got four crucial elements to pay attention to on this screen. First up, you've got your canvas, where we see episode one, map one in all its glory. We'll be getting rid of that shortly. This is where all of our editing will take place. Next up over here, you've got your tools. These are the elements used to actually do the editing. So you've got a pencil tool, which will allow you, if I select a random item to just draw individual pixels. There's a flood fill so I can fill, let's say the whole area is now that uh, dirty brick and then so on and so forth. There's a select tool, there's a flood tool so I can, there's a tool so I can just draw a specific block of them, so on and so forth. You've got your actual items and paintbrushes as you saw, I just selected one and used one and your drop down menu to switch between the different types. So here we, you can see your walls, your doors, and your floor codes, which I'll get into later. And then if you drop, go to the drop down menu, you see there's also objects and extra. You don't have to worry about extra unless you're doing more advanced modding. So let's click on objects and you'll see a variety of different things. Ignore the top three. They are things I've added for another project. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, you can see that you've got your player start icons. You've got a bunch of decorative and pickup items. If you scroll down further, you can see all your enemies. Very nice and simple. You click on one of these things, got pencil tool selected. You can add an, you can add an officer. You can add several officers if you want. You can flood the whole map with officers and then get an error. Let's start making a simple map. So first up, we're going to go back to the walls section. We're going to select the solid rectangle and we're going to clear the whole map by filling it with gray brick. And then we will also erase all of the objects on the screen by selecting nothing, selecting the block tool again, and that should clear everything. Now we've got, now we've got a clean slate. It's always better to use walls for your clean slate instead of just uh, filling the, it with the void because that can lead to errors in older games. That said, now let's use nothing to draw our first room. So we select nothing and we will select the pencil tool and draw a room. You can do it this way manually if you want to do more finesse or if you wanted to create like a curvy cave structure or just not a square room. Like for example, let's add, let's just do that. We'll have the player start there. So a bit of a raw thing. There we go. There's our first weirdly shaped room. You can make it whatever you want though. Now that we have a room, we should fill it with some objects. We'll select object. Now your first most crucial object is a player item. There are four options here, 19 through 22. They are all titled start. Each arrow signifies which way the player is going to be facing when he is placed there. So given the shape of our map, we're gonna select 19 where he is facing north and we'll set him at the bottom here. 
So there we go. Now we have a player in our map. If you run the game, he will appear in this empty room, but there is nothing else there. So now that we have that, we should add something else there. Let's add an enemy for the player to face. Now, if you scroll down in the objects menu, you will see a plethora, so many different enemy icons to select, all with different names, numbers, and information. Now, each name can be easily broken down. You've got the enemy type, so you can see there's guards, officers, SS, and if you scroll down, there's mutants and bosses. Then you have the number. So there's one through four. Each number signifies a different difficulty. If you place a guard at guard one, he will appear on any difficulty. If you place a guard at guard four, he will only appear on the hardest difficulty, which is I am, I am Death Incarnate in vanilla. Then you've got a choice of whether or not the guard is moving or standing, but we'll get into moving guards in another video. For now, we wanna place one enemy. We will select a standing guard, and we're gonna have him over here in the, in the other side of the room facing to the east. So when the player comes around the corner, the guard is facing away and won't see the player. The player will have the element of surprise. So now we have a player and an enemy. We need an, an end point. How does the player win? The player wins in Wolfenstein by getting to an elevator. So let's add an elevator room. We'll select the nothing button again, and then we will select the block tool this time, the solid rectangle, and we will use that to draw our room. The room, the elevator, we'll set it in the corner and we'll make it nine, we'll make it a three by three room. There we go. Elevator rooms don't need to be too big. Player needs to get to the room, so we'll scroll down in the walls menu until we get to doors. You'll see that there's multiple options. Four of them need keys, one of them's an elevator door, and one's a normal door, and two are normal doors. Now, you will want to select an elevator door since this is the elevator room, and we will want to make sure since the wall that's connecting it is, an, is a wall that the player will approach from the east or west that we select the appropriate door. If you don't, the player will not be able to open it and will not be able to finish the game. All right, so now that we've got a door and these two rooms are now officially rooms, we need to add the actual elevator for the player to get to. If we scroll up, hit elevator, and then drop one at the other end of the room, making sure, oh, that's two of them. Let's hit control Z, gotta love undo features. We place an elevator. Now, when the player comes through, he'll kill the guard, go through the door, and be able to get to the next floor. The player and the elevator are the core elements of the room, but there are also three other things that are often needed to be considered in a, in a traditional Wolfenstein map. You've got enemies, which we've accounted for with our guard here. Let's add another one. Let's add a guard four so that he will only appear on hardest difficulties and we'll put him behind the player. Don't do this typically, but it's just as an example and now the player is going to be surprised. So that's enemies taken care of. The other two elements, you usually need a secret area in your map and you need treasure in your map for the player to collect because every map has the player's score attributed to a percentage of those three elements. So did he kill all 100% of enemies? Did he collect 100% of the treasure? And did he find 100% of the secret areas? So we're gonna kill two birds, one stone, and we're gonna put the treasure in our secret area. So first up, let's build a secret area. Let's go nothing. And we'll put the secret area right next to the elevator. We'll make it a We'll bring it this far and make it this big, but you can do whatever you would like, as long as it's got a wall connecting to it that the player can get to. So we're gonna use this wall right here. Now we have to turn this push wall or this normal wall into a pushable wall. To do that in, the, in Wolfenstein, all you gotta do is scroll down to objects and then we will scroll back up and find the secret wall button, secret door. Click that, click on any wall you'd like to be a pushable wall and bam, you now have a secret door. But why is the player going through that door? We'll add some treasure. So the player has a reason to get through. He wants the treasure. We'll, add, we'll go back to using the pencil tool and we'll place chalices in a U shape like that just for fun. And we'll put a crown on it. There we go. So the crowns and chalices are collectibles in the game. Player will have a fun time finding those. One last thing to consider before we move on is the fact that this is called nothing. So there's nothing on the f in this area. 
We're free to roam around it, but that doesn't necessarily make it finished. We have to go back to walls and scroll all the way down to floor codes. Now, floor codes are a fundamental part of the game. They are necessary for enemies to know when you fire a gunshot and all that sort of stuff. So we'll select the flood fill tool and we'll fill the whole room with this floor code. So now, if I were to fire at this guard right here behind me on a harder difficulty, the guard up here will be notified because both I am on the same floor code as this guard when I am shooting. You should always have floor codes in your map. And if you have a secret area, make sure that that secret area um, has the same floor code as the room it is connected to. So we're gonna do that. And then just for fun, we're going to use a different floor code for the elevator room. So if I fired a gun in that elevator room, the enemies out in this room wouldn't hear it and vice versa. And that actually does it. That's all the core elements you actually need for a Wolfenstein map. We've got our player, we've got rooms for the player to be in, we've got enemies to fight, we've got an end point for the player to get to, and then we even have a secret area for the player to discover with treasure. So without further ado, let's give it a quick look and see if it worked. To do that, we just have to go up to File and hit Compile All. This will save all changes that we may have made to any of the files. In this case, we would have only changed the game maps file. We hit OK once it all says done. Hopefully there's no errors in your version. And then we boot up our game. But we want to make sure that we select the first. Okay, as you can see, there's our level in all of its empty glory. Look at that, the walls are curved and everything. Oh, there's our guard. Strafe over, give him a quick shot. There we go, and tap the secret area. Always got to get the secret area. There's our chalices, oh baby. Okay, and with that, all that's left is to check out our elevator room. Look at that. That's our level, that's perfect. All right. We'll also take a quick look at the hard difficulty because we did add a harder enemy. So we'll go into I Am Deaf Incarnate. And behind us should be, hello sir, how are you today? And he's dead. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. We'll just skip straight to the elevator room. We don't need the secret area for this example. And spot on, that was fantastic. All right, provided you did everything properly, you should have had a similar result to me. So congratulations, you've just made your first Wolfenstein 3D map. Please let me know in the comments if you had any problems and I'll attempt to help you with them. And hopefully, if this works out, there'll be more videos going into more detail with more elements of map making. With that, I'll hopefully see you next time.